Yeah, so now you want to get into real estate. What was your first thing? Was it education or did you just jump like head first and try to make a deal? So uh, <clears throat> in that moment, I didn't realize the power of what I did, right? So in that moment, I decided I was going to be a successful real estate investor, right? I didn't say, I'm going to try to be a real estate investor. I didn't say, I'm going to go see how it goes. I decided at three in the morning, I was like, word, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be good at that. Right. And at that moment, I didn't realize how powerful that was. But like when you make a decision, right, it changes your mindset. Like you start to when when crap gets hard now, I already told myself I'm going to be good at this. So my brain starts figuring out ways to navigate obstacles. Right. And I think too many people say, oh, I'm going to give that a shot or I'm going to try it. Right. And when you do that, you're not telling your brain you're going to figure it out. You're telling your brain you're going to stop as soon as it gets hard. Right. Mm. And. So step one was I made that decision. Step two was I started immersing myself in real estate information and culture, right? Like books, podcasts, like if I was had a spare moment, it was real estate content in my head. No matter how I could get it, I was getting it in my head. And then I surrounded myself with other investors in my local market. Because if you're going to do something, you got to be around the people that are doing it, yeah. right? Like you just got to immerse yourself in everything that is that thing right who do pro who do pro ball players hang out with they hang out with pro ball players right because that's mm -hmm. where opportunities come from they learn more about how to train and take care of their bodies they learn all the tips and tricks of the trade by hanging out with like-minded individuals and so i just immediately was like i got to get around other investors and so any real estate investment meetup group it didn't matter i was there i was in the room both to learn and I wanted people to see me as an investor. And the next thing I did was I just started telling people I was an investor. I didn't know how I was going to be an investor. I only had a thousand dollars in my savings account. I still had bad credit, but I told people I'm a real estate investor. If somebody asked me what I did, I introduced myself. I'm Henry. I invest in real estate and I work for Walmart in the, in the, in the real estate department. Right? Those, those are the things I would say to people because if I didn't believe I was going to be successful, who, who the heck else was supposed to believe me? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that helped me get my first deal because somebody, one of my, one of my buddies heard I, I was buying property and he had to sell a house super quick. Um, and he knew he had to sell it under market value. So he was like, Oh, Henry's buying houses. Let me call him real quick. And, and I ended up buying that. That was my first deal. Yeah, man. You know, it's, it's, a, you drop so many gems, bro. But yeah. one thing I want to say about like real estate investing, that, that that's kind of like how I even get deals to this day is just from like word of mouth. Yeah, and I tell most new investors the same thing. You got to start introducing yourself as a real estate investor, right? right? You know, back back in the day when we used to do business cards, no one does business cards no more. But I used to tell people to get a business card that says real estate investor. They said, well, I don't own any houses. It doesn't matter. You have to carry yourself like a real estate. Because what will happen is deals will come to you, right? Okay. And you walk that. You walk that. So that, that that's that's amazing, man. So um, you scaled your business up. Like uh, right now, how many doors do you currently have? Um... 65 plus okay so over 65 okay yeah so you scaled it up um and along that journey right of starting to where you were you having that conversation and saying i want to be a real estate investor so now you're successful you've you've created a whole new life for yourself um what was the biggest hurdle or something that you had to overcome going through that journey man the biggest hurdle um yeah man so um uh, i think there's both so there's two a couple different kinds of hurdles, right? So there's the hurdle of like, what are some actual tangible hurdles within the industry? And then there's like mental hurdles, right? So I'll, I'll talk about uh, one of each, right? And so the tangible hurdle came kind of after I got in the game, right? And so I think a lot of new people that want to get into investing, right? They think, you know, they understand the concepts, right? You got to buy something under market value. You got to add value to it by fixing it up, right? And then you either rent it or you sell it or you wholesale it, whatever your disposition strategy is, right? But nobody thinks like the details of that, right? And so I knew I was like, all I was focused on when I got started was how to find a good deal, where am I going to find a good deal, how am I going to buy it, how am I going to get under contract, right? And so once I did all that and I finally had the deal, then I was like, well, somebody got to work on this property, right? <laughs> and like finding contractors and managing contractors is by far the hardest part of this business. Man, oh, man. hey, Corey, what do you think? <laughs> for, right? so, man, he just, you just, you just sang the song that Jimmy sings every day. Man, <laughs> man. man listen to this till this day. Absolutely, 
Yes, yeah, facts, man. And like, you just don't know that going in, right? Like on the front side, once you figure out how to get good at finding deals and get, and you figure out your strategy for purchasing your deals, like that just goes on rinse and repeat. Like that is not hard once you get going, but the contractor part, that part stays hard, right? And well, so- yeah, from, And for me, just to give you a little perspective, for me, um, most of the people that told me, they would always complain about tenants. Oh, I got yeah. this tenant that does this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tenants haven't been the hard part for me. It's the contractors. Yes, that is 100% true. And so like, I lost a lot. I got all the same horror stories everybody else does. I lost a lot of money here and there. People started a job, walked off of my money. People didn't do what they're supposed to. Like I've got all the horror stories. And so like learning how to have a process for both, like how to find contractors and then learning how to have a process for like how to maintain a good contractor once you find one like that. That was, that was the biggest challenge for sure.